In the Irons, five minute FaceTime, Umberto Raspoli, week number two. Umberto, how's it going? Very good, Andrew. Yourself? I'm doing great. How's California weather treating you? Uh, look, we got some uh, heavy rain last week, couple, last couple of weeks, which uh, um, uh, affect a lot on the on the racing as well. Uh, we had a couple of meeting uh, off, uh, but at the same time, I have the chance to enjoy the family more. So uh, doesn't go that wasn't that bad. Well, I know you have a new baby, so it must be nice uh, spend a little more time at home. Probably change a couple more diapers than normal. So here we go, five questions. Start off question number one. I got to ask, from Italy to France to Hong Kong to Southern California, walk me through how you this whole process started. Um, very simple. Um, my dad was a jockey back in the days in Italy. Um, he used to ride most of the, those races that we call Palios, uh, which you are racing on the street. Um, I was, um, I can say I born, uh, I born in the, in the barn, so I grew up with uh, this uh, only intent to be a rider, be a jockey. Um, at, the, at the age of the 16th, I went to the jockey school. Uh, I worked from a couple of all, all of fame Italian uh, trainers. Uh, and as soon as I get my license, I worked for the best, uh, best trainer we had in Italy, Alduino and Giuseppe Botti, they were two brothers. I was a champion apprentice. I was a champion jockey twice. I broke the Frankie's, the tourist father, record in uh, uh, two, I make 245 wins in uh, in one year. Uh, from there, I decided to go have a, uh, a winter in Japan. Um, I was very successful. I had my first grade one in Japan. I moved to uh, little stint to Hong Kong. I won the one of the biggest races they have it, the Queen Elizabeth. And uh, from there, I met my agent to take me from uh, from Italy to France. His name was uh, is uh, is actually Alexis Dusso. So I had that transition. I went in France uh, four years. Then another step uh, after being grateful in France as well. I have uh, such a great time and a lot of good good winners. Um, I moved to Hong Kong, and uh, I think which is the toughest jurisdiction to jockeys in the world um, and after that I was uh, just uh, feeling to change and I decided to move to California once I talked to Ron Anderson on the phone I met Ron Anderson and uh, and uh, here we are that's an amazing story and world traveler you've ridden pretty much everywhere uh, I have to ask you though before we go into anything else question number two Hong Kong what was that like that is the the, the mecca of horse racing let's say you, you know two days a week you have pretty much mounts every single race you have top jockeys. I mean, the horses are so even almost across the way, uh, evenly matched. You know, what is that like? Because I feel like the, the jockey makes such a big difference there versus other jurisdictions where the horse's class is really even versus other places where you have horses coming up and down. It's really even there. So what was that experience like? What was it like living there? I mean, the life in Hong Kong is beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, it's, a, it's a country where, uh, you know, um, open the arms to everybody, gives an opportunity to everybody. And uh, the, Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong Jockey Club, uh, you know, gives you this chance, this opportunity to be there. But what makes excited everything is that every single race is a handicap racing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the most difficult part of the game is that you're not allowed to have an, a jockey a agent out, out there. So you be an agent to yourself. So you find the horses by yourself. Uh, that's what is very, very tough because, you know, you have to handicap horses during the week. You do exactly the, the agent work over there. It's very difficult. It's always it's a open races. Um, I would say the favorite most of the time won, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not always like that. As I said, you know, you go from a scale from under thirty three pounds to uh, under thirteen, so it's a twenty pounds difference. The atmosphere it's amazing. I mean, the people wear the track just because they're passionate. They like uh, Chinese people love gambling. Uh, I don't know if you're watching. Yesterday there was the the Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. uh, Seventy four thousand people. I think, 74,000 people, insane. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But that's just because the Chinese New Year attract a lot of people because, you know, it's a lucky day for them. They very, they really wish to go there and win some money. So, uh, but yeah, I I would say one thing, and that thing is true. Once you go away from Hong Kong, no matter where you come from, and no matter you move over, you, you are a better jockey. You're more sharp, you are more clever. Because the rules are very strict, uh, you can't cross another horse if you don't have a two lengths clear. Um, 
if you move a little bit, you easily easily get suspended. So you have to be sharp. You have to be, uh, you know, it's all about the highs, reactive. Uh, that's that's what Hong Kong makes a jockey. I mean, once you move from Hong Kong, you you're a better jockey for sure. Hong Kong was amazing. You rode with some of the best jockeys in the world there. Question number three, I have to ask you. You're riding with the legends right now. He's in from Italy. Now he's in Southern California. Frankie Dettori, what is it like? I'm sure you looked up to him a little bit as a kid. I know you just mentioned before you broke his father's record. What is it like being in the jockey room with a guy like that, knowing that this is his last season as a jockey? Look, it's a, it's a sad to hear that Frankie is gonna be is gonna is gonna quit at the end of this year. But you know, it's gonna be a hand for everybody. And um, for me, I'm just enjoying every single moment that I spend in the jockey room with him right now. Because as as you mentioned, as a kid, you know. You you only from Italy you only watch one rider and it was him you know uh, when I was a kid he was a uh, the first jockey for Godolphin he was winning everything all around the world I was following him everywhere and for me you know it's a uh, it's a dream come true to share uh, the room with he's just actually uh, we got the same valet uh, we are laughing every day uh, and I can't believe it how Frankie uh, every is. It's it's amazing. It is is the first guy at the track. Is the first jockey at the jocks room. I was surprised on the opening day. I said, "What are you doing?" You you hear? He said, "I arrived here two hours ago." He was already there from two hours before the first race, and he's the first one walking to the paddock. Um, is I think he's just now. He's just enjoying his. You know, it's it's last year. He really uh, he really wants to uh, let go everything. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's a privilege to share a room with a, with a guy like Frankie. And uh, unfortunately, as I said, this last year. I was lucky enough to meet him at Aqueduct this year when he came in and he won a nice grade one there. And then I saw him again at the Breeders' Cup when we were chatting. And one thing I found out, uh, you, I was, uh, you was standing next to you and him at the Breeders' Cup. And it's just the back and forth. He is just like a prankster joking around. He is about to go into a grade one mount, but he's still smiling. And same with you, smiling all the time. Keeping it light, and, and I love to see that type of uh, that that mentality of well, keeping it light, matter what happens. I think I think you know that's that's very important. You know, uh, it's not because you smile it means that you're not focused. So once you jump on a horse, you know mm -hmm. what you have to do. But the, the you know the way you go to um, to face what a what, a, what a, to face the the, the racing the uh, the competition. You know, once you're gonna put down the goggle, you know what a what a, what it does it does expect you so uh, and as I said Frankie Frankie is as a rider you know is an example so you you wish to dream and you wish in dreaming uh, to win what he won in his career that's amazing so I got a question number four I want to ask you a little about your riding style you've won the Santa Anita Derby grade one on dirt you've won the Shoebreaker Mile Stakes grade one on turf in California I mean dirt turf you are a phenomenal rider the number one thing in your riding when we look at all the replays is the timing where did this timing skill come? What do you do? It seems like when you win a lot of times, you time it up perfectly to hit them right at the line. What are you doing to prepare and to really hone in that skill? Is that something that you learned in Hong Kong? Is that your timing just seems like you have a clock in your head that is sometimes always perfectly on point? Look, Andrew, I think, you know, the first things you have, the first thing you need, it's the horse, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you always to have to understand. I mean, from my point, you know, you have to feel what your horse feels, what what your horse tells you to do it. Uh, I'm a guy. Then I watch a lot of replays. I, I do a lot of forums. Uh, I come back home, and most of the time, I look at the horses, then the, the races that I lost instead of the, the races I won. You know, because I want to understand where I do make the mistake. Uh, after, you know, I don't know if it's the timing. Uh, sometimes it's natural. Um, but obviously, you know, the fact that then I have a lot of experience all around the world, riding with the good riders, listening a lot about the advice of the biggest jockeys in the world, you know, and you, uh, you had all this advice together, you put it in together. And I think, you know, uh, you got a real good combo. Uh, but obviously, you know, as I said, the horse, most of the time is the, is the one that makes the difference. You just have to be, uh, sharp, clever. Uh, and sometimes uh, you have to be patient uh, to, to, to just let your horse the chance uh, to take him uh, where he wants to take you. You know, you just jump on him. He's going he's gonna to drive you there no matter, no matter what. After, you know, sometimes you have to take decision. You have to go in. You have to go out. Uh, 
you don't have time. You don't have too much time to to react and to to think about it. You just go. You follow the, you follow your mind, and you say, okay, let's go. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. But you know, uh, it's what it is. <laughs> I, I have to ask then a follow up question on that same one. Is just talking about you know the San Anita Derby. You won a Grade One on dirt, Rock Your World. You know, I could pick out a lot of victories you've had over your entire career. What was that like winning a grade one there at Santa Anita Derby? I mean, that's a, that's a huge race throughout the year. What was that like? Uh, it was a different feeling because, uh, you know, seems I, uh, I, I moved to California. I was running behind my first grade one uh, during the year, and I was a second and second and third and second and third, and I couldn't make my first grade one. And... Uh, Obviously, you know, once you have the chance to, to ride a horse like Rocky Ward, like do I have, um, I knew that that horse could, could be something special. Um, I, I rode him the previous time in the, on the grass, actually, and I do know then uh, if the horse could have a lead that day on the San Anita Derby, uh, he, could, uh, he could do something special, and that's what happened. But the, the feeling was amazing. I mean, uh, obviously, it wasn't the Kentucky Derby, but still... <laughs> It was the San Anita Derby, and it's an amazing race here in California, so I was very happy. I mean, it's a huge race in California, top three of the year, so congratulations on that. Last question for you, question number Thanks. five. I got to ask you about, you know, your family life. What is it like? I know you're married. You have two beautiful kids. I, I, I've met your son before. I feel like uh, if you follow Humberto on Instagram, you're going to know his son's now into soccer, and I think soccer might have taken over your household a little bit. What's, maybe the World Cup is an influence, but what is it like? You know, what's that family relationship like with you know having a child and and coming back home every day? And your wife, does she say, "Oh, did you do this? Do you talk about racing?" What's that whole atmosphere like? No, uh, I mean my wife understands right away when I cross the door uh, how my day goes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, it's very simple. Yeah. Uh, my the, the first the first one I get criticized for it's it's my son. He just come to me if I don't win. He say that uh, why well, you don't win today. So, uh, but you know uh, now he has a uh, he's, he has his first jockey. He's he's a, he's a main rider right now. He's a, he's he's he's, um, he's his friend Ricky Gonzalez. He's he's he loves Ricky. Uh, every time Ricky won, he was more happy when Ricky won than instead of instead of if I won a race. So uh, most of the time I come back and say, you see, hey, I won. Yeah, but I don't care. Ricky won, so I'm more happy for that. So, uh, But, yeah, no, I mean, he's my first support, my first supporter. He loves the soccer. He loves it. And every day, once he comes back from school, he says, Dad, is any soccer on the TV today? Uh, he really like it. So uh, it was very tough for us to see the World Cup without Italy, but he's half French, so uh, he was... Uh, between, <laughs> uh, but you know it's very important. I think the support from the family you have every day uh, when a thing goes well and, out, and almost when a thing doesn't go in the right in the right way, uh, it's a good to have a, a huge shoulder uh, as a, a wife take care of you, take care of your business, take care about everything happening to the house. And I have to give a, a credit to her for this. Uh, but also, you know, I really enjoy come back home and, and, and spend the time with my child because it's a you know, when I come back home, I, I let my bag outside of the door and, you know, everything uh, everything is outside and the business is outside of the door. So I think uh, once you're done, you have to enjoy the family and, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the, one of the most beautiful things in the world. So just enjoy your family when you can. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I, I followed you on social media. I've met you a couple times in person. It seems like you have an amazing support system behind you and uh, it, it's definitely part of your success. I mean, you've moved continent to continent and it seems like that, that support structure has helped you out the whole way just one last follow-up on that same question you know what, if you weren't a jockey what would you be doing right now what what do you think you would be doing if you weren't a jockey would would you be a soccer player what would what, what would Roberto Umberto Rispoli be doing right now uh I would like to tell you Andrew I would be a, a soccer player <laughs> but I wasn't that good <laughs> uh I mean I could run a lot but my feet they are no uh I wasn't I wasn't to be the the Cristiano Ronaldo, the Messi of the situation, but you know, uh, I always I play soccer from seven to fourteen uh, when I was young, and I'm still a big passionate of soccer. So I do really like a soccer. I follow every soccer all around the world, and uh, yeah, probably probably that. 
Well, Umberto, I really appreciate your time today. Congratulations. I know you've you had a couple dirt wins like this past week. Um, you've had some grade ones. You, I, I saw you at the Breeders' Cup this weekend this year. You're off to a, a, a nice little start to this year, and we hope to see a lot more coming to you, and uh, hopefully we'll see each other down the road, possibly during this Triple Crown. It was my pleasure, Andy. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, and congrats for, uh, for uh, your uh, horse racing nation. It's lovely, lovely to follow. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome.